This episode of Speakers of Fidelin is made possible by our generous patrons, like Chris, Clinway, Metelago, Phalion, Ariel, Adam James, CeeLo Redwind, Dimos, Sprocket, Christoph Haas, Sentra, Amy Veras, Casey Schaefer, Bobby Forbridge, and Omega Cat Comet. Support the show and become a patron today at patreon.com slash speakersxiv. This is Speakers of Fidelin. Good evening, Aorcians. Welcome to Speakers of Fidelin, episode 66. I'm Lukeel Bravestone, and I am joined today by Myla Vanadar. It's just you and me today, Myla. Um, just the two of us. Yeah, we'll make do. Um, today we're going to talk about patch 4.11, which obviously um, gonna it's going to mostly be about the ultimate coil of mm -hmm. Bahamut. Um, also, a quick uh, talk about the the HUD issues that have been raging on in Aorcia, um, and some fan gatherings that we thought was interesting um, to talk about. Um, in the post-show today, we're going to premiere episode 4 of Secrets of a Realm. Um, it will... Uh, the sec Okay, let's just go to channel updates immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Secrets of a Realm. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome. Um, Hello. Yeah, in the post show we'll premiere Secrets of a Realm episode 4. It will not go live on YouTube, it will go live on Patreon after the post show. Uh, and then it will go live on YouTube um, tomorrow? Um, no, actually it's going to go live on Monday, so Patreon and then Monday we'll get the um, Secrets of a Realm on YouTube. Um, yeah, Speakers reads Tales from the storm has been moved to November, um, so look forward to that, patrons. Um, simply ran out of time, <laughs> uh, so that, that's uh, that's that's just why that's happening. Um, uh, also, in the post show, of course, we're going to have the regular um, reading comments, and we will um, talk to patrons and discuss patron topics. Okay, let's talk about patch four point one one. Or do we want to talk about what we did this week in 14? Have you done anything Can in 14? We? I'm very, very close to maxing out Kojin now. I think like one or two days left. Oh, man. I compl I keep forgetting about... I'm going to have the Manta Ray Mount, Luke, and I'm going to ride it around you everywhere you go. Yeah, you are, aren't you? Oh, it's going to be great. It's... Oh, that annoys me now that I forgot about that. Mm. Hesman... Okay, Ma uh, Managa, I've done every every... Every week, so I'm I'm good on that at least. I've never done a Monaco in my life. <laughs> so at least I have that. There's they yeah, they reveal they reveal that you get an emote now from her. It's like really? the uh, hmm, emote. <laughs> oh, you'll look great doing that. I'm gonna use that all the time. Mm. Yeah. Um, does Kojin max out at seven or uh, or is eight in there yet? I assume seven. If it's eight, then I'm you not You think it's going to be like seven and then like the bonus, like yeah, I said in the previous episode, that's going to be... I think be... that will be the bonus one. Once all of them are in and we're doing like the final wrap-up quests with all of them, and mm -hmm. then we get the funny dance. Yeah. Um, I haven't really done much in the... I haven't even done... I haven't capped. I've capped every week since the patch... Since patch 4.1 now, which is rare, because it's so much easier to cap now. Because of the Alliance Raid Roulette. That's um, true. I means I don't really get to level my classes, but I use the Alliance Raid Roulette now to get some tombs. Um, I haven't done that uh, this week. I haven't, I'm haven't. i not close to capping, so I have to do some serious farming later. Also, I haven't done, have much... done much... Yeah, what? Have you done much of the Halloween thing? Yeah, cause... I was just about to say, I haven't yeah. done any of it. <laughs> I need to do more of that. Yeah, me too. Uh... Okay, let's talk about patch 4.11, the unending coils of the Bahamut. Best. Yes. It is day four, and there's still no clear. Ah, oh, fantastic. And as far as we know, it, it doesn't seem to be any, uh, be one... Uh, what am I saying? It doesn't seem like there's going to be a clear anytime soon. Nope. 
and that's amazing. Latest reports were that pe most people, I, it, we have no conf confirmation that anyone has passed Bahamut at this point. Mm. Though there was that one picture, that the mm. tiniest picture of something oh, different. Wormhead. Yeah, um, I don't know if that's a phase transition from Bahamut to the next phase, or if it's just a part of the Bahamut fight. Um, so, uh, interesting to say the least. I wonder how many raid uh, teams just dissolve because of this. I'm assuming uh, quite a lot. Uh, <laughs> you, you don't have to be ultimate if you want. You can just carry on with Savage yeah. once the next tier come out. Yeah, of course. Uh, but dude, that, th those weapons are going to be <sighs> so like valuable because yeah. this fight has really proven to be difficult. So let's talk a little bit about the... Do you, first of all, do you think it's going to be cleared by the, the end of this month? Not by the end of this month, I don't think. I'm going to give it mid to late November. I think it will take that long. It does seem like with it, how yeah. it's going. It, especially... Because there have been data miners, of course, mm -hmm. uh, and there are conflicting uh, reports, but I've seen mm -hmm. everything from uh, four to six phases total. Mm -hmm. Which, if it's six phases, that means that people are, people are struggling to get halfway through the fight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. Uh, so let's talk about the difficulty, because that's, that's the main reason why... Um, I mean, that is obviously why no one's cleared it yet. It's too darn hard. Mm. Um, I don't think... like it is. I think it's safe to say now that it, it has to be the hardest fight put in the game. Yeah, easily, yeah. Um, ever. Uh, some would probably argue that the broken... Uh, was it A3S? Yes, yeah. Living Liquid. Because that one took... How long did it take? I feel like it took over a week to clear that. Or more. I can't remember. I don't know, but it definitely destroyed a lot of teams. Yes, that's we also the, the podcast was actually going at that point, I believe, and that's when we talked about uh, how the raiding community sort of just fell apart because of that mm. fight. Um, I don't think that's going to happen here because you still have Savage. Mm. Uh, this is like extra level difficulty. Yeah, and uh, um, one of the things that really spiked because of this was. The interest on Twitch, mm -hmm. the amount of people watching clear or prog groups mm. on Twitch has skyrocketed. It was really absurd searching it for was, yeah. Final Fantasy XIV on Twitch and seeing people with like 8,000 views um, streaming Twintania. It was like Twintania all over. It was like waking up in 2013. Um, <laughs> it was pretty cool. And it's still going. Um, there's like one group... That's what's it? It's just the yeah, numbers, like fifty fifty one or whatever it is. Yeah, fifty. Yeah, They're the only people who seem to have bothered to continue streaming. <laughs> yeah, everyone else has given. <laughs> yeah, most of them have given up at this point. Um, we still have we haven't heard anything from Angered yet. Uh, yet. As far as I know. Um, so do you think Angered is gonna clear it this time? Mm -hmm. Th these, that's why I'm enjoying it more, is because it's f an open field and they could lose the crown. Mm hmm. That's... And that's what's going to spur more people on to try it. Yeah. So I don't know if they will be so or not. They have more competition now because it's been going yeah. on for so long, yeah. Um, which is good. Um, mm -hmm. It's it's refreshing to finally... Because mm. that's always been like the weak point of 14. When people criticize 14, they always say, I guess the raids, the raids suck because they're cleared in less than four hours. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but now we have actual hardcore content that keeps mm -hmm. like that 1% busy. Mm. And that was what mo I think I think that was like the one thing we really needed. Um because what does that mean for the Final Fantasy 14 community? I think I'm thinking mostly about because we talked about this earlier today. Um Gilgamesh which is a <laughs> Is it, if you if you don't know what, what's going on in Gilgamesh, I I would uh, urge you to read read up on that because Gilgamesh is, has been declining for a long time because of the lock the on the server. But one of the main reasons why Gilgamesh was failing was because all the hardcore raiders left because they only logged in that one one day a week to do um, the raid and that was it. 
I would I would guess right now that Gilgamesh is seeing a slight improvement now because raiders are returning and actually staying online all day, all week to clear it. Maybe there's more life coming into Gilgamesh right now. Mm -hmm. um, that 1% is returning, <laughs> which is good. Um, also, like, yeah. the, the reputation of 14 um, is... I've seen some... Uh, <laughs> I've seen the usual wow people in chat trying to complain. <laughs> <laughs> it's always funny to see those uh, because people get so tr we we've had this in the great discussion before but people getting triggered by by wow people um but it, it's interesting to see how long it's going to take before they clear it though yeah i mean it's quite interesting because i think a lot of people in this community sort of live vicariously through the one percent yeah if they clear something they kind of feel like it's done yeah and they they ha they can have their opinion on it whether mm -hmm. or not they've actually experienced it yeah so now there's something that no one's cleared, and that's amazing. Yeah. And no one can really say, you know, oh, so easy, or oh, <laughs> you've cleared it, so yeah. great. Um, but then, of course, with all hard content comes the complaints. <sighs> and yeah. the um, official forums are starting to get some... Uh, <sighs> some threads are starting to pop up there. Complaining about the difficulty. Mm. What do you think about that? <laughs> I, it's, I knew, sort of knew it would happen. Yeah. But if you watch the people who are progressing on Twitch, they are so happy when they wipe, laughing away. Yeah. They're enjoying it. They're loving it. They've got something to do. Yeah. So I don't think they'll nerf it. And if they do, I'll be incredibly disappointed, to be honest with you. If they nerf it, it's so pointless to nerf this. Yeah, because this was explicitly designed to be extremely difficult. Yeah, it is not supposed to be casual content that you can just pick up. This this is not an expert dungeon. Mm -hmm. This one piece of content, leave it alone. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Don't touch it. You don't have just eventually because eventually you know as gear starts to catch up yeah. to this raid, eventually it'll be clearable by by a lot of people eventually you might be able to get those weapons because exactly. i think that's what most people are bitching about right now because they don't have a static they're not hardcore enough so they can't get the weapons but mm, please <laughs> this is for that one percent just let them have this don't exactly. ruin it uh, you need those raiders more than you think mm. actually <laughs> so um don't don't ruin this and i do hope the devs don't even consider nerfing this mm. content. I know they said that they didn't want to nerf, like they said point blank, they didn't want to nerf Shinryu in the mm. main scenario um, fight. So please, <laughs> I hope that also applies to this fight, which was designed mm. to be the hardest content in the game. <sighs> I just I had agree. to get that off my chest because that is my biggest fear if they do that because that sort of destroys the whole. It destroys the point of it. Yeah. There's no the point. Yeah. If no one gets the weapons in like three months' time, who cares, right? Mm -hmm. It's still the hardest content then. Yeah. Yeah. But event eventually, I mean, we'll... yeah, statistically, eventually it will, ha the gear will be so good mm -hmm. that you will have to be, you will be able to get through it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it's difficult to get the, the those weapons. You might never get those weapons. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tough luck. But there's a lot of other gear you can get. <laughs> so And you'll be able to get better gear next patch. Yes. So, <laughs> so. don't worry. It's more about the achievement. And yeah. that achievement is whoever earns that, they that's well deserved. Whoever wins exactly, clears yeah. this. Good job. Mm. Uh, they also get like a title, I think. The Legend, which... Again, worth it. Mm. It's, worth, I mean, it's worth fighting for it as well. Yeah. So. Yeah. Getting on it. Um, so, what does this mean for the future of Final Fantasy XIV's um, raids? Like, we're in, like, a very, like, almost scary time for MMOs, where MMOs just seem to go more and more casual. This sort of yeah. feels like a weird uh, thing that just doesn't really happen that much anymore, where hardcore mm. content is put in. Do you think we'll see, like, because we, uh, obviously they're going to continue this, because this has been a massive success, I, I would say. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, people that don't even try the like I am never going to do that raid, but I've 
I keep watching it on Twitch. I can't stop mm. watching it. <laughs> and it's it shows that there is still a big market or a big audience for this kind of content, especially on Twitch. Yeah. Um, so do you think... You know, that they tried, the, in, initially they wanted this to be Titan, which to me, is, <laughs> I can't even imagine that fight. Um, but no, do you I think... I can't see how make it harder. How would you make Titan Extreme harder? <laughs> that's, that's a good question. I mean, I you'd have to have, have like to a it. tiny, tiny arena. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's all I can think of. But yeah, seeing how crazy that fight is, on uh, mm. the unending coil fight is, I mean, they could, they could have just changed everything with it, that fight. They could have yeah. switched arenas and whatever. Uh, yeah. So we're definitely getting more ultimate mm. fights. Yes. Uh, Do you think it'll be like a one per expansion kind of thing, or a bit more regular? it seems like it's probably quite a bit of work to actually make a fight that hard. Yeah, I don't and know. You don't, you don't want to like, you don't want to put too much of it in because if no one beats yeah. this one, and yeah, then they bring out another one. Exactly. Maybe like every two patches again. Maybe with like this with odd numbered patches, maybe we'll get one. I don't that, know. That would be cool. Yeah, I mean, they said that they didn't. Um, they didn't. Um, this was done by people that didn't really have anything to do. <laughs> Uh, at the t this wasn't this didn't take any resources away from the main content of the patch mm. as far as I know. Yeah. So if those people are still available when they're uh, making patch three point three, then I mm. I I don't see any reason why they wouldn't. It's fun. Maybe that's when we get Osma. Osma would be great. Um, Do you think they'll expand it so it's not always eight man, but maybe incorporate twenty four man? I feel like but it's it a little bit very difficult. Yeah, I mean, it's it does kind of feel like it's a little bit sandboxy, this. They're sort of trying stuff with yeah. this. So maybe they could possibly do that. That would be really cool. Like a full-on oh. raid. Um, yeah, we'll, um, we'll, we'll... I guess we'll see. Mm. But at the... at when, we're, when we did this episode live, it was not cleared yet. Maybe it's cleared no. when this goes out on YouTube. Who knows? It's really gotcha. scary because the, 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 the serious frog groups they don't say anything they don't stream anything they don't release anything i don't like that <laughs> so we don't know we just have to wait for that one message coming up like someone cleared it I'm just waiting for that tweet on twitter um okay so um and then an ending coils of bahamut great content thank you great yoshi p and crew yeah. you did it actually did it he didn't exaggerate no, for, for once. once. Yeah. <laughs> so and that's that good. That fight just looks so good. Yeah, it's really well done. Um I don't I don't I kind of want to talk about all the rumors, but it's I feel like it's just going to be pointless. Eventually when this fight is cleared, we'll know. <laughs> but mm. there there I think it is more or less confirmed, I think, that Luis was Phoenix. Or it's not confirmed because no one's gone there oh, yet as far as I know. But data miners seem to have found Luis Suarez Phoenix in the data files. So he might be in there somewhere. Oh, God, I want to yeah. see it all, but <laughs> just have to wait. Uh, okay, let's move on to um, 4.11's uh, downside, because, boy, has there been issues with the HUD. Yes. Um, I haven't had... I haven't actually switched classes, so I don't know. I haven't I haven't uh, checked. But on my main, there's nothing wrong. Um but after patch 4.11, people started reporting that there were issues with the HUD. The HUD had mm. reset. Um, and it's kind of weird how this all played out. Um, on October the 25th, um, Square Enix posted uh, an official update. Um, we have confirmed the below issue. We ask for your patience and understanding as we strive to resolve this promptly. Known issue. The HUD layout may switch back to default when logging in after patch 4.11. We have confirmed that this issue occurs when there is at least one unused slot in the HUD layout mode. However, because it is impossible, uh, sorry, because it is possible that there are other conditions uh, that may also trigger the issue, we are continuing to investigate. We will update you as soon as there are any new information. Hmm. So they didn't specify exactly what was like they they were they were a bit vague there because I don't think they quite knew <laughs> what the issues were. Um, then there was a follow up the same day. We have an update regarding the issue. The issue, the HUD. Nice typo. The HUD may switch back to default layout when logging in after patch 4.11. Investigation has confirmed the following. 
if a player has at least one layout slot number that has uh, never been selected before in their HUD layout mode, logging in after patch 4.11 causes certain settings saved on the client side to become initialized. <sighs> While we are continuing to address the issue, if you have already been affected and your settings initialized, it is unfortunately not possible, possible, possible for us to restore that data because the data was saved on the client. If your settings have been initialized, you, we can only ask that you make your settings again. <laughs> We greatly apologize for this inconvenience. As a note, to those who meet the above conditions, logging into the game for the first time after the implementation of patch 4.11, this issue occurs only once, so there is no danger of settings becoming initialized again multiple times. In addition, because this issue affects um, only data saved on the client, it does not affect character data saved on the servers. So that's good. <laughs> Would have been yeah. real fucked if, if that happened. So the affected settings was basically all general windows, uh, position size, HUD layout settings, position size, high display, job HUD. <laughs> There's a lot. I, I don't even know. How, I don't think I can go through all of this. It's basically yeah, it's <laughs> uh, like almost two pages of um, yes. of stuff. Uh, and then on October the 27th, yesterday, uh, another update. We greatly apologize for the inconvenience caused by the <laughs> UI settings and display issues after patch 4.11. We had reported on the situation in known issue after patch 4.11 on October the 25th follow-up notice. While conducting investigation and fixes, we have confirmed further issues related to UI settings and display. After the follow-up notice, we have received reports of cases that did not match the situations described in the notice, as well as cases where issues were occurring multiple times. Unfortunately, these cases may be the result of different issues than the ones previously listed, and we are unable to provide information at this time. We greatly apologize for this inconvenience. We are currently prioritizing investigation and have determined a possible cause from the reports from our players. We are confirming whether this case, sorry, cause is responsible for all current issues and cautiously proceeding with addressing this issue. Us addressing all related issues may take some time in an effort to minimize further cases. We are prioritizing to address the, <laughs> prioritizing, uh, to address those for which the cause is clear and have the greatest effects. We ask that you wait a while longer for these issues to be resolved. We greatly apologize for the inconvenience this may uh, be causing and thank you for your patience. Jesus, he said we greatly apologize for the inconvenience about four times. And prioritize. They prioritize. Oh. Everything is prioritized here, guys. Don't worry. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah. It seems to be a big uh, big uh, glitch. I, I wonder why that patch did that. Because there wasn't a lot added. Um, well, it must to be that. some top secret thing in the it's UI. Some, yeah. Um, they, I mean, they... I changed to samurai and my thing had moved to like to the the, the class gauge thing had moved but mm -hmm. thankfully that seems to be the only thing that's happened to me oh okay i haven't had anything in before all of everything is yeah, fucked when i log in now log in, it's all just in the center of the screen um yeah there's really nothing you can do to prevent it because it just happens when you log in so mm. look <laughs> prioritize the apologies there you go <laughs> Um, in other news, um, a fan gathering has been announced for Copenhagen, which I thought was the most random thing ever, but it's mm. happening. Um, it's, I think it's the first time they have one in Scandinavia. I can't, I, hmm, I can't remember there ever being one. Uh, so that's cool. Um, we are thrilled to announce that we are holding the first ever fan gathering on Saturday, November the 25th in Copenhagen, Denmark. Actually, a decent uh, yeah. uh, time, uh, like time frame, so you actually have some time to <laughs> to book that or like prepare for it. Um, mm, a whole month or so. That's yeah, this is an excellent chance to meet someone, uh, some like-minded Final Fantasy fourteen players and FC friends over drinks and talk about your favorite game. Places are limited, so be sure to reserve your seat now. How many seats, you ask? Fifty. That's mm. mm. maybe two FCs. So if there are two FCs in. <laughs> Denmark. In Denmark, Sweden, or Norway, um, you can go to Denmark. Would you travel to Copenhagen? No. <laughs> Lock <your> shoe. <laughs> and look, just not you, but like just in general. Though. I mean, who would? Yeah, it's very easy to go to Denmark from Norway. Is it, it? It's yeah, it's like going to a different city. Oh. It's we have in Norway. We have like um, it's called. Uh, I'm not going to say it in Norwegian. We just oh, call it on. the Danish boat. 
mm. and it goes to Denmark. I think it, it goes like several times a day. And it takes like they have these new speed, high speed ferries. And I think they take like is it four hours? It's still quite a long time. It is it is three or four hours. But it's to a different country. So yeah, a I different wow. country. Denmark and Norway are pretty similar. <laughs> but yeah, and Sweden has a bridge. So you can just drive to, to Denmark. It's very easy. Mm, interesting. It is, it is. Um uh, Lock okay. <clears throat> Laku <laughs> Laku Kishu and Lala Linga will be your hosts those names will be your hosts and both look forward to spending a fantastic evening with you there will be drinks snacks and of course a raffle with great prizes oh, oh yeah. yeah yeah it's on Saturday November the 25th 2017 at 7 p.m. until 11 p.m. CET uh, Central European time of course you can stay longer if you want to but the official event ends at 11 p.m. Central European time Mm. The evening will be at Mini Bar in downtown Copenhagen. It's only a few minutes walk from um, Nuraport Station. So there are 50 seats available for this fan gathering to register, blah, blah, blah. There's that usual. If you want to know, it's ffxivnordic at eu dot square uh, dash. Is it dash? No, what's it called? Hyphen. Hyphen. Enix dot com. Your email needs... Okay, we don't need to go through all this. It's the same stuff that they did for the pop-up event for... Uh, if you want to check it out, it's at... Uh, what's the website? For what, sorry? I'm, the, the website for this. There is a website for this. I can't remember what it is right now. What, for the Gantt fan gathering? Yeah, there there was a... I think I might have removed it from the show notes. Oh. <laughs> I just got got to buy the... We will select the first 25 attendees on a first-come, first-served basis, but the remaining 25 will be raffled. Oh, yeah. Between all those who showed their interest by sending an email by November the 12th to the email address above. Only successful applicants will be contacted via email on November 15th. The latest to confirm their attendance. I had a mean stroke. Please note that the event will only be open to attendees that are over 18 years of age. So what to expect? Meet up with Lens. FC friends and other like-minded Final Fantasy XIV players. At least two drinks on us. Free finger food. And a giveaway with great prizes. Wow. Yeah, boy. Free so finger food. So if you're in Scandinavia and you have FC friends from Scandinavia. Or, or Denmark. If you just want two drinks and some free finger food and don't even like Final Fantasy XIV. <laughs> <laughs> just go anyway. Yeah, why not? Um, also in London, we didn't address this in the previous episode, did we? The pop-up event in London? I don't remember. No, because I think it was just spoiler cast. I think we Uh, were mostly gone into that. So we might as well mention it. Uh, the time, I think you can, it's too late to apply now. Um, but... It's um, next weekend, I think. uh, Yeah, in London... It's on Friday. You can meet Yoshi P in London. There's a pop-up event... Um, limited. It's it's so it says Final Fantasy 30th anniversary, mm. so it's linked to that for some reason. But it seems to only be about 14. Yeah, it? It, or is. Is it anything? I mean, oh, well, it doesn't quite say. No, it says the pop experience is a limited time event taking place in London, UK, celebrating the 30th anniversary of the Final Fantasy series. Fans will have the opportunity to play legendary games from the series, purchase special limited edition merchandise, and selected Final Fantasy XIV items from the Square Enix store and enjoy a selection of artwork covering 30 years of Final Fantasy history. So it's not an exclusive Final Fantasy XIV event, but Yoshi P will be there. Cool. Uh, I do like the merch, which is like the only thing that I'm sad that I'm not going to get. I can show... If anyone's going (laughs) and wants to buy me a mug... Yeah. Here you go. Feel There's free. Baby Behemoth plush and some mugs. Look at them. They're so good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so we'll be right back. We'll have a quick break. See you guys in the post show. If you're watching this on YouTube, you might have to go over to, to twitch.tv slash speakers of Pideland to catch the post show. Mm-hmm. I'm Lukeel Bravestone. I've been joined by Maya Lavanadar. Mm-hmm. We'll be back next week if you're not watching the post show. See you then, guys. Bye. Bye.